we come to the final character in the, the David and Bathsheba story, and that is the prophet Nathan. God tells Nathan to go to uh, David to confront him with his actions. Prophets are not well liked thousands of years later. People that speak truth to power are still not well liked. We look back in history at some of them very fondly, just like we do the prophets. But while he still walked the face of the earth, Martin Luther King Jr. had a lot of enemies and a lot of people that wanted him to die because he spoke truth to power. He encouraged the church to be the conscience of the nation, to, to remind them it is their role to proclaim God's justice when injustice is happening. Prophets were called to such a role. Because of that, they get killed, they get abused. And here Nathan is going to David. He uses a brilliant tactic. He tells David a, a story, a, a story about a rich man and a poor man. And that even though the rich man had plenty of flocks, when a stranger came, he killed the sheep of the poor man. The poor man who treated that lamb as a daughter because he didn't want to give up what he already had. It was a very simple story about a, a rich and powerful man taking advantage uh, of a poor man when he had no reason to. David burned with anger at that injustice. <laughs> he sees no pity for that man. Until Nathan says to him, you are that man. You are the one who didn't seek justice. See, it is so easy for us to find everybody else's faults and failures when we're blind to our own. And so when Jesus says, judge not, lest you be judged, that's the old school language, it is a simple reminder to us. It's not saying we can never judge behavior as right or wrong, but it is a warning to make sure we're willing to live up to the standards. Uh, we cannot be like David, condemning the actions of somebody else while performing the same thing ourselves. We need to be reminded time and again that justice matters to God even when it's our fault. We need to be focused more on ourselves than on others. And it's so easy for us in the midst of stress, in the midst of concerns, to look at everybody else's faults and wag our fingers at them while ignoring our own. And we need prophets in our lives. We need people who are willing to speak truth to us, to point out our faults and failures, not so that we can be condemned, but so that we, like David, can turn around and seek God's presence in our lives. Being a prophet is always hard. Having those conversations is always hard. But if your relationships are strong enough, you can do it. Scripture talks about how uh, if we turn a brother or sister away from sinning, there's much rejoicing. We, we have this obligation to play this role with each other. Not so that we can angrily condemn, but so we can lovingly build up. We need to be Nathans for people in our lives that need that prophet. We need to be Davids to our Nathans, who instead of rising up and killing him, David repents, goes back to God. This story does so much to remind us of what is wrong and how to make it right. And I hope this story empowers you um, to be David when you're wrong. Nathan to other people who have wronged so that we can all be focused on God's presence in our lives. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for the people you've placed in our lives to proclaim your gospel message. Thank you, Father, that, that none of us just came to your presence without somebody telling us that you love us. Father, for the times when we are wrong, let us rest in your grace 
and allow us to be the prophets to this nation and to every nation for your glory, that every heart, that every knee would bow and every tongue would confess that you are Lord. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Remember to stay physically distant, but please stay connected and let us love everybody.